All right, so this year for 2012, the Gospel Music Festival in Chicago is going to change formats a little bit. Yes. It's going to spread across the city. Would you Excellent. like to talk to us about that? One, our former Minister of Music, Dr. Eva J. Purnell, was honored in 2007 as one as a, of the living legends. And our okay. choir had an opportunity to sing uh, and back her at the Gospel Fest. We were so disappointed when it was not in its usual venue last year. But this year, to bring it back into uh, more or less the neighborhoods that birth gospel music is something I am truly looking forward to. I'm glad to see that people realize the seminal role that Chicago has had in gospel music and are giving homage and honor to that legacy and to those people who were so, so phenomenal in bringing gospel around the country and the world. Now, who are some unsung heroes, some people that you know of who've never gotten acclaim on a national scale, but maybe on a local scale? Now, the first person I think of uh, is Dolores Barrett Campbell and the Barrett yes. sisters, although they, they are acclaimed somewhat. I don't think they've ever really uh, received the acknowledgement that they deserve. Uh, Dr. Eva Jane Purnell, who was one of those honored, had a group that uh, she sung with. Alman Dawson was their musician, and uh, there are two, I think, members of the group that are still alive, the inspirational singers. They were on Sid Ordauer in the 60s, but they never received the acclaim of many of the others. There are countless groups around Chicago who sing in churches on a regular basis. Every church has their own unsung hero because many of us are blessed with beautiful voices that are lifted and anointed so I can talk about my church but I can think of many churches that we fellowship with and there are so many beautiful voices and so many anointed singers that it's hard for me to just put my finger on any one person and say that they should be uh, among them with the Lawrence Barrett Campbell I have listened to over the years uh, the inspirational singers with Eva Jean I have listened to over the years. And uh, there are many church choirs that are just phenomenal. Just phenomenal. All right. Well, we definitely have a celebration of gospel coming up, as well as Sunday Best, the uh, rumor that Sunday Best Season 5 is coming up. What do you think about this new thing of having a talent show? It can be kind of controversial because no one is really better singer than another one in God's eyes. We're all the same. But w what do you think it does for gospel when you have those types of talent shows? It brings in a larger audience because many people will tune into a talent show uh, just to hear hear the people sing. And it's possible just from hearing them sing that they receive the message of the gospel and are convicted or converted or even uh, say, well, I would like to join a choir. Uh, I love to hear the testimonies at the workshop. There is a director from Sweden who has a 500 voice choir. And he tells us that most of the people in the choir are not Christians. They didn't come as Christians. They came because of the music. But from the music and from the message, many of them have come, uh, become converted. We have an awesome Japanese choir that comes over and sings our songs in perfect English. Their, their uh, director is African-American. But to hear them <laughs> sing, if you did not see them, you would not know they were Japanese. So the Sunday Best and, and programs of that nature are an opportunity for people around the world to become better acquainted with our music, with the gospel, and with its message. Uh, like all talent shows or all TV shows, there there's a possibility that there's some bias in the terms of who's chosen. Yeah. Uh, but the, the, the point of singing gospel is not for the popularity or the fame. It's for spreading the message of the good news. And if the singers come with that perspective, no one loses anything. They may not get the claim of man, but they certainly have it of God. Amen. And the last thought, we have praise teams now. You've talked yes. about smaller groups now. Do you think that it, it can, can be a good thing or can big groups be a good thing as well? I think there's room for both. Okay. God's world is room for everything and everybody. I don't want to see one to the exclusion of the other. 
I know the praise teams came to bring the younger people into the worship service so that they weren't just uh, spectators, they were more participators because praise teams are more young people being involved. Yeah. But I don't want um, anything to be left out of God's program, God's worship service. You can't say anything after that. <laughs> I'm here with Miss Catherine Kemp, Minister Catherine Kemp from Memorial Baptist Church. She's been here for our segment, and I thank you so much for joining me oh, today. Oh, thank you. God it bless. was a pleasure. God, God bless. bless you.